All right. Welcome back, everyone, to episode four. Um, yep. We got two new players today and two returning. Um, so we got uh, Gary and Greg. Um, Gary, could you uh, change your uh, name at the bottom of your plate to your character name? And then tell us a little bit about yourself, whatever is important to you that you'd like to you know, say. And then... Um, explain your you know give us a brief overview of your character uh yeah uh my name's gary um uh, i'll be playing uh eleanor uh starfire sharif she's an illusionist mage um she's a real spitfire um and yeah anything else you'd like to know uh nope that's it uh, just make sure you change your character name or your name at the bottom there yep, I'm trying to figure out how it's a uh, gear top right and then display name Thanks. All right, Greg, uh, what say the same thing, sort of what's important to you and a little bit about your character. Uh, what's important to me is uh, trying to relax in these non-relaxing times. Uh, my character is gregarious. Uh, he's a ranger, wanderer, place no stock in wealthy or well-mannered folk. Awesome. All right, so um, we got a little bit of uh, clerical business here we want got to take care of first. Um, we did a huge upgrade on our art and maps uh, between this game and last game. Um, I'm going to post the link to this dude's uh, website in, our, uh, in the links below. Um, it's from a website called Two Minute Tabletop. Um, it's an artist named Ross, uh, is what it says here on his sheet. Uh, he does some awesome work. Uh, our new, uh, the new places we go will have them. Some of our old stuff won't, just because I haven't changed it over. I'll just keep that. But as we explore more, it's going to be in there. Uh, you should check it out. Uh, pretty awesome stuff. All right. So, um, getting into it here, um, we will start again in the meeting room. Um, this is a large, uh, great hall in the dwarven, uh, city of Gathal. Uh, you all, uh, have gathered here, uh, in front of the mayor. Uh, this, this dwarven city has a, a mayor, uh, as time went on, it became less appropriate to be like a king because there were so many other people and other things. So he sort of holds himself as, as an authority figure in, in his and how he composes himself and not over other people. Um, he, he says, uh, thank you all for coming again. And he, and for some, for the first time, uh, we are glad. I'm glad you're here. Um, <laughs> are you attacking him, sorry. Starfire? <laughs> no, <sorry. laughs> um, we have uh, much to do. Uh, we've made a lot of plans and have some news from the outside now that we've started um, exploring it. Um, today marks the day uh, of a week. Uh, we have been outside and exploring. So it is a landmark to be sure. So um, we, thanks to Relaine, Coil, Arethi and Gravy, we were able to locate a place for our lumber mill. So that is currently being worked on. Uh, I would like it if you could uh, check in with um, them, if you could. Uh, they said that they heard some strange noises last night. Uh, might be a good place to start. I have some other things that I've heard. Um, there seems to be um, a person that uh wandered in across the river uh exhausted they didn't make it across the river um but it might be worth uh exploring where they might have came from uh we have also spotted a flock of birds to the uh towards the archipelago outside and uh, of course can, we still have the can, wizard's tower to can explore. you show us can you show us those things on the map? Absolutely. So I've also upgraded my map. Uh, since Dan gave me some guff about it in episode one, I have updated it and zoomed in a little bit. So here's the mountain range up here. This We can't see it. Oh, right. Yep. Sorry. All right. So here's the new updated hand-drawn map that I drew. Um, so 
Here up here is the mountain range, which you all live in. This little circle here represents the exit of Gathal. Uh, this river, and this is the lumber mill that has just been started. It's not like fully up yet. It's just being uh, built. Uh, here is a great forest. Um, this, while it looks like it may be a, a, a break in the forest, it's, it's actually not. It's just like a visual representation of where you guys had that battle with the uh, on, on the rocks there. Um, and then there is a wizard's tower in the in the great distance. Uh, it's about three days away. Imagine each of these uh, so, like these lines, these wavy lines here, as like a day's travel out. Um, so the birds were noticed here on the coast of the archipelago. Um, we would like you to check in with the uh, lumber mill, um, and then also the person that came wandering. He, uh, they, they, they died of exhaustion. Um, around here before we could get across the river and save them. Jason, I thought there was a... Uh, the way you've got that... Ta is there not forest entirely between the tower and there? Or are you just not filling it in because we haven't been there yet? Yeah, that's exactly it. I'm not filling it in yet because you haven't been there yet. There's there's stuff there, but I'm going to fill it in the forest around it. Just, this is the explored region that you've gone to. So I guess we don't actually know that it's forest. Uh, is that it? I thought we had seen it yeah. from the air. O Orithi oh, okay. had confirmed. Orithi okay. uh, is a uh, is a uh, Eric Cohen adventurer that was on the uh, last. Uh, Keen explains she flew up and did confirm that there is forest from here to here. Okay. And then also this is the the great hole that we spoke about last that that. That gravy mm -hmm. relayed us. Uh, it's a, it basically a great hole that goes as far as I anyone can tell into the earth. My question is to Mayor McShee is what exactly does he think that we're going to get from... I mean, the guy's dead, right? Did they bring the body over here? Like, what are, what are we going to learn exactly by going to the place that he fell from dehydration? Maybe where he came from. Uh, these are all just ideas. How would, like, how would you know that by walking to a place that a guy fell? Uh, maybe you I could like really question him. Right? Uh, uh, we uh, could. Well, you never know unless you check it out. I'm we not a. I'm not to... a ranger or anything. Uh, I know I mean, Reverius follow is, his tracks. I guess is, is a tracker. Yeah. But uh, uh, I, this guy dying. That's very very sad and all. But um, what was this about the birds? That's interesting. Yeah. Um, well, while we were bringing supplies to and from the lumber mill, uh, we could hear uh, screeching off in the distance uh, near near the coast. Um, we don't know why. Uh, maybe it might be something to check out. These, these are all just options available to you. Uh, you. You can choose which one you'd like to pursue. Well, uh, perhaps it would be wisest to check out the lumber mill to make sure that the camp is still safe. Yeah, that's uh, which that's my vote for sure. All right, cool. And, uh, and while we're there, we could also investigate the the body, right? Because that's close by. Mm -hmm. And uh, why don't we give um, a quick description and. Um, uh, like intro of like uh, Starfire and Gravarius here, uh, like character description and um, like maybe just like a, a little input about what you do, you know, something you say or bring attention to during this meeting. We'll start with uh, um, Starfire. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, so Starfire is a, um, a female half elf. Um, she's long. Uh, she's tall and sort of slender with. Um, red head uh, bob cut and uh, with a staff and um, her specialty is illusion magic um, um, she's very um, uh, chatty friendly person um, she's actually of, of a noble background but doesn't really let on doesn't want people to know that about herself usually and what's um, something that you like bring up that you think is important like just Important about myself or, or uh, these during the meeting? Or? Like, what do you think? Like, make a comment on one of the things that we talked about. 
Uh, I think the birds sound very neat. I think, I'm, I mean, the screeching, I'm not sure, but I bet they could be very colorful. All right, awesome. And Gravarious. Oh, you're muted. Gray hair, blue eyes. Um, I tend to like to keep to myself. Um, so that's part of the reason why I'm looking to get out of the stronghold. Get out. I know I'll be with you guys, but at least a little more space. Uh, the birds do sound interesting, um, but uh, I'll follow the lead of the rest of you if you think we should go check out uh, the lumber mill. All right. Awesome. So uh, the meeting is is finishing. Um, Keen says, uh, I'll leave you to it. And then you all can role play and make decisions. Well, I, while the birds do sound interesting, I'm not sure we'd have a method of travel that would take us across the water to the islands. Sounded like they were closer to the shore. It looks like, I mean, looking at the map, I mean, we got to go through the lumber mill anyway to get where we're going, don't we? Uh, I think we could kind of cut through some of the mountains or the hills. Oh, I see. But uh, we could do the lumber mill. Yeah. It seems to me that in either case, no matter what we decide to do, secondarily, uh, the lumber mill seems like a good place to start, just for security's sake. I I agree. So shall we make? For the lumber mill? We should. Let's do it. All right. Um, is there anything that you'd like to do or pick up uh, before before we leave here? Um, there isn't a ton of stuff here that like is really for sale. Um, there is one potion of uh, healing left if you guys would like to pool or buy that. Um, but that's that's really all that, that's left to like other than just like normal stuff that you would find in the adventures. You might, you might mention to them why that is or how that's working. Right. So um, there are these things called uh, crystallized magic that uh, you all may or may not find out on your adventures. Uh, they basically can be put towards your civilization, uh, basically your kingdom, to improve it in certain ways. I've created a document here of more examples and kind of flesh it out a little bit since last game. Um, and we can go over that later if you do find one. But uh, the reason why you have an alchemist is um, basically like magic and the d connection to the divine have dwindled over the 200 years spent in Gathal. And Donnie uh, decided on the first game uh, to put some towards a an alchemist and now they can refine potions into healing potions. Just, just a little bit... Uh... The reason the reasoning behind that was because at the time we had literally no one playing the game that had any healing ability whatsoever. Do we so, now? Um, maybe not in well, Josh. Yeah. yeah. Um, Josh does, and I have various restorative nanotechnologies, and eventually our um, ranger friend will have really simple ones. I think, right? Don't they, we can do hope. they still get magic at uh, a certain point? I don't know. I didn't double. I haven't looked at that since uh, five. Years. Yeah, I've, I haven't played with a. They do. A decent level ranger. They do. But uh, yeah, so that's the uh, the long and short of it. So is there uh, like uh, other shops? Like, is there a general store in town? Is there an armorer or a blacksmith or a weaponsmith? Yep, there are. Yep. Okay. They just don't produce. It's just all mundane. Yeah, things, they just right? suck. It's not Correct. Necessary. Yeah, all mundane stuff. The only the okay. only thing that is not mundane is the the amulets that you all get that will bring you home, which I've right. gone over with the new players. Okay. Um. So I I'm. Uh. I will show Starfire and. Gravarious where the potion shop is if they want to buy anything, but uh, as it stands, I I will decline any purchases. 
don't worry about consider it. Consider having them replenish a little bit faster if uh, if you're rotating your cast, Jay. I have misplaced my coin pouch, and I'm not exactly sure how much. I can't remember how much I had in it. All right, let's figure it out. I'd say that gold pieces are just a construct, but um, oh my god, <laughs> it might be nice to know that too. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Uh, Gravarius, you need to roll. Uh, now in D and D, we're still on the the but, gold uh, standard, not it's... on this fugazi <laughs> currency like we are in the real world. Uh, actually, it's in a different spot, isn't it? Uh, it's in Coil. chapter five. Oh, okay, at the beginning of uh, Gregarious. Gravarius, roll um, 5d4. So that times 10 is how much gold you have. Okay. Also, um, depending on whatever your background is, you might have gotten some bonus to it as well. Yeah. And then um, for Starfire, you are a wizard. You're going to roll 4d4. There's my book. 4d4? Yep. So that times 10. And how much was the healing potion? The healing potion is 50 gold. Do we? Does anyone else have a healing potion right now, or is it just our... Relaine, is just, did just you coil? purchase the healing potion? I sure did. Yeah, so we, we have a healing potion, and I have healing. Okay. Yeah. I think we're fine. All right. Cool. So you make your way to the lumber mill, yeah? Yep. Good. Just, you know, no promises that I'm actually going to use it. Whoa. I have it. All right. All right. <laughs> like you like pouring it in your – it's like we shotcut to just him pouring it in their mouth. Like that'll be 50 gold, please. <laughs> <laughs> Never know. Um, okay. So you arrive at a sort of – a structure that will one day be the lumber mill. Uh, like basically there are walls getting like laid out, um, you know, lumber, like trees are being cut into things that will make this. Um, and it's getting all planned. Um, there is a woman named Min Benov. Uh, she is the foreman. Um, and uh, she, she kind of gives you a nod as you, as you approach and she says, hey. Greetings. Hello. I am Coyle. What is your name? Please comply. Uh, my name is Min. Uh, are, are you here to help us or? Well, we're here to see if you're okay. See how things are going. Yeah, I think we so. Have been, we have been informed that there has been danger around. Well, there's certainly a lot of noises uh, or the threat of danger. We haven't really seen everything yet. Um, I know some adventurers, I was told, cleared this place out uh, a couple days ago. So I thought it was the next day, Jason. Yeah, it's the next day. So we, we, we did this yesterday, so sometime overnight. Yeah, you did it early, early morning, and then um, you, did, you, did a, you did a long rest, so it's actually been... Like almost been two days. Two yeah. days. Yep. Because mm -hmm. you okay. left and then you came back and then you long rested and then left again. Okay. Well, there's nothing here in this immediate area, but we've been hearing sounds. So, um, over here in this direction, we heard a just last night we heard like a loud. Uh, it's like something large is hurt. We uh, I, we don't know. We haven't. We don't send scouts, really. We just stay here. Um, so that's all the way over here. It's pretty far away. Um, and then, you know, the birds that we were talking about as we were coming back and forth. Um, and then we saw someone, you know, just kind of walk up. Um, we buried them, and you can see there's, like, a little uh, like a little burial mound nearby with, like, one of them, just like a, like a stick cross for now. Um, what did they look like? Um, they were a, a dwarf. Um, they a dwarf. Yeah, they they kind of reminded me uh, of what what uh, that gravy looks like. You know, 
Were they in their underwear? Uh, well, more dressed than gravy, but you know, same same complexion and build. You mean I gravy? See. Uh, yeah, it's one of those uh, adventurers. You know? He's uh, he's a barbarian. Curiously named. Oh, oh, okay, Ooh. one of those. I see. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well. What did he have on him for belongings? Not too much. Uh, he just had sort of the clothes on his back. Um, and uh, that was really it. No, nothing. Nothing. Uh, it, it was weird. Like, usually they'd, they'd come with more, like a backpack or something of that nature. But didn't have anything on him. I'll, how did you get to him if he was, he was across the river? Uh, yeah, we, we built one of those little, um, it's like a, you know, a rope and then you just pull yourself across with, um, you know, okay. there's like a little raft. Uh, I'll, <clears throat> Relaine, it seems like you would be less bothered by this than perhaps some other, uh, individuals would you mind exhuming the body why would you have that impression uh what impression <laughs> that that you wouldn't mind exhuming the body yeah just wondering. uh it, you're a tiefling right ah okay um i mean i could i could um don't particularly care for it, but I will. So I guess if you want me to, uh... I can dig up the body if you want. It doesn't bother me. I vote him. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you're gonna spend some time digging up the body. Yep. All right. It has been dug up. Um, you uh, give me a medicine or investigation check, whichever you'd like, as you look over the body. Could I go through his belongings? Yeah. This you, is you don't find anything other than that. Do you want to do a medicine check, Josh? Yeah, I can. Ooh. All right. So, um, you, uh, Gravarius, you noticed that um, he was, like, very dehydrated, like you know. Um, he, it seemed like he'd been walking for a really long time. Um, and he also... Uh, you notice like signs of um, like uh, torture, uh, like like in his fingernails are kind of all the way down. Like this this dude was not doing well before before he died. Um, hmm. Coil, you notice um, the medical stuff of that, and the other medical thing that you notice is um, on his arm, like up up here, um, there are some some cuts. Uh, and then the um, the skin around them is sort of like ha like it's uh, before he died. Uh, it's kind of become like a like a concrete color, like a gray like kind of thing. Like there, there's like a cut, and then it becomes like gray around it, like some cor some kind of like um, stoning effect or something. You know, like a cockatrice or some some, some mm. like, but just like a little bit of it, not like not like a whole body, just like a like a little bit. Okay, uh, so I, I'll point out and I say, it would appear there is a kind of petrification happening by by this wound here. Uh, quite a I bit have... of unpleasantness before that, I think. Look at his fingernails. Yes, I would agree. I, I wonder if a kind of basilisk or something, perhaps he uh, encountered the, one of those. It's only the fingernails? Well, the petrification was around the arm, the shoulder, like the upper arm. The fingernails, and I'll, I'll show you, see, look here, the fingernails, it looks like uh, something was pulling at them or, or putting a blade beneath them. 
it, it would appear maybe he was being tortured by another group. I'll turn to the foreman and I say, I suggest you start keeping watches at night. Yeah, we, we've been uh, keeping just a very few amount of people out here. Most of us go back in at home and then we only leave a, a few people, but yeah, on watches for sure. So do we know which direction he came from? Yeah, he came from over here. This is where he like he died right here and he, he seemed to come from this direction but you'd have to go over there to really start tracking him yeah did we want to uh cross the river and kind of look a little bit at what was going on there what kind of footwear did he have um he had like tattered sandals like it wasn't like he had already walked a ways you know what i mean like they if we were to track him, it sounds like it would be a long walk ahead of us. Yeah, I agree. I'm not sure it would be worth it to to track him very far, but it, perhaps he had some sort of campsite on the other side of the river or something. She shrugs. I think the the sound of that wounded animal is a more immediate issue Did you say when we were talking about this at the beginning that they uh he died on the other side of the river right so they had to go over they went to the other side of the river retrieved the corpse brought it back and buried him mm-hmm. yep so they don't the person who's shrugging do they know anything like there 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 was uh nothing like what was going on surrounding his body was there like any um it was just the dead body on the ground. There was nothing left behind, no campsite, nothing like that. No, he, he, he walked from that direction and she points and, and we, we saw him collapse before we could even get out there. No, I get that. But there, so, so it was just, just the body. Just him. Nothing yeah. else. Okay. And would it be worth investigating that area? You think? Did you look mm-hmm. around? Uh, I mean, yeah, that's as, what I'm kind of trying to sort out is if they did even anything like that or we're, we're just builders, you know, we don't really know what to look for, you know, like we don't, I say we take a look, what's it gonna, what's it gonna cost us? What are they gonna do? Take away our birthdays? Let's they can look. do that. We'll, we'll find out. I say we, let's just check it out. See if there's anything there. If there's nothing there, then we walk away. No big deal. Sure. How fast is this river moving? It's not that fast. I mean, it, it's okay. it's a good river, but you guys can you guys could cross it like without a, a t- like it'll just take some time. Okay. So you guys want to go over to where he collapsed? Yeah. Sure. All right, uh, Donnie, you good with that? Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Um, so um, you guys go over. Um, go ahead and make a survival check when you get over there. Uh, I think, uh, and then maybe Gravarius and, oh, e- each of us. Oops. I was going to say just Gravarius cause he's the tracker, but <laughs> well, <laughs> hello. I, I think I see something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You and coil really, you just find out everything. Yeah. So you can see he's, um, very clearly making tracks, um, and like his feet, come like you know you can see them getting weaker and weaker yeah he was uh, really dragging his feet it left a clear trail mm-hmm. and then as you as you move if you want to move further from where he came from he came from down in this direction here more towards the hole um so you know that that's where you're going if that's where you'd like to go like you could definitely track this all the way back to its source okay well I, I, now that we've seen this, I do, uh, feel I'm with Gravarius that the possibility of a wounded beast, uh, on the other side of the forest is perhaps more pressing. Uh, oh, let me also add in, since you got crits, um, 
there's no blood around here, so the the cuts and things would have had to have happened like longer ago. Like like there like the petrification stuff didn't happen in this area, or there was no attack here. Right. Okay. Interesting. A little more reason to think there's not a pressing matter. Yeah, it's a harsh wilderness. People die out here. Doesn't seem and like a huge mystery. The the fact that his gear and garb resembled gravy suggests and gravy is a is a pilgrim, he's a traveler, so that suggests to me that he has come from far away. Um but this is something perhaps we can investigate later. Mm. Uh so we'll we'll cross the river again and then go check out the beast, if that's okay with everyone. Does anyone have any other ideas or thoughts? Yeah, I'll just take careful note of the trail and the land the, the landscape, so kind of fix it in my mind. Cool. Let me make sure I write that down for you. I'm just gonna because you got a crit, so like I'll just write down that you like you definitely know like you could come back to this and find it. Okay. I can't believe both of you rolled twenties. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. Yeah. What are the chances of that? Like one in ten? <laughs> <laughs> Roughly. <laughs> Josh putting that that theater degree or English degree on 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 presentation there, huh? All right. Cool. So uh you guys travel. It's pretty far. So you're like the like you keep you think that like they heard it like closer to the the lumber yard but sure. like whatever was making this noise was like far it's like all the way like near nearer to the coast than it is the lumber mill so it's what it, what kind of noise is it like a shriek or a growl or a scream uh it's like a loud guttural painful noise like M uh, make the noise for it yeah all right all right yeah let's, let's do a little role play all right <laughs> like something like that. Okay. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Oh, rough. Now, I, you, I felt the pain. Can you a glass of water for me, please? Yeah. All right. <laughs> um. So I'm gonna show you guys before we go over there to a map. I'm gonna show you guys your new character models. Yay. All right. Cool. Um. So just so we know who's who. So we got this one here. This cool little guy is going to be Coil, uh, as, like, as much as a robot as I could find. This one here is Relane. Cool. Uh, this one is Starfire and Gravarius. You should be able to still control them and all that stuff. Yeah, I can control mine. Perfect. Okay. I cannot control mine. Is it drag, drag yeah, and drop? Yeah, you should or? be able to drag it. Yeah, let me make sure. Oh, you don't. I did not put yours. There we go. All right, you should be able to move yours now. All right, cool. So this place um, is relatively like open. Like before you get into the forest, there's like a few trees here and there, um, but you can see things like pretty far in a distance. So what you see is, let me find it here. Oh, well, uh, one second. I gotta move the pages around. The dragging looks acts weird. All right, this is what you see. Your your people are all the way down here on this map, um, and you see this like way in the distance, so it's pretty far. Uh, you see a hill giant uh, who has been like he he's like this tree that's down is like in him. It's like in his body, like um, it's like kind of going all the way through it, and he is just in pain. Um, and just writhing around out there. That's not something you see every day. No. And, no. and he's, poor he's, fella. He's in like a circle. Like uh, that. yeah. So That's you see rude. some like weird black, like charring on the, the grass beneath him, but you'd have to get closer to really give it a good inspection. All right, I'll start. All right. Uh, it, so we're not in the forest right now, so it's not dark. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so I, I, I think I 
I tried to make it so that you guys could kind of see like a little bit of what's going on here. Like the sure. forest here is on the left hand side, like as you're coming up there, like as you as you on the left, it's like gets more dense, and there are like little bushes, and those are trees. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think my character token got swapped out with somebody else. Oh yeah, I did not expect you to be here. That's right. Can you control the characters? Okay. I don't know what's going on here. Okay. Let me bring the, the characters in again. I had, like, prepped all the maps to have two people, <laughs> in, but new people showed up, and it's great. There we go. All right. So you should be able to control them. Um, all right. So what we will do is we will roll initiative. Um, so we got this cool new... Uh, I'm going to use this thing here. Um, all right, cool. Yeah, so yours went into the order. Yep. And then, so what I want you to... And we're going to click on your character. Yep. All right, Donnie, can you click on your character and then enter into the initiative? Is that possible? But I can't. Oh, there we go. Um... So you cl right click on it and go to add turn. Can you do that? Yeah, I'm working on it. Um, and I can't select my character. Yeah, I don't have an add turn option. Really? Really? All right. Oh, I can select it now. I can select it. it. It looks like you reset it for some reason. I don't know. Like I had, um, I had put in my HP and stuff and whatnot, and it was uh, in the name. That's not there anymore. If you just select the character and then go to your character sheet and hit initiative, at least for me, it worked. I didn't have to do the right click, uh, and I don't have that option to right click and yeah, my character sheet's not filled out. But this is again, we're doing things that. One second. Yeah, none of my. Hold on. You should have access to it. Uh, I... But that's not what my role was, though. My role was a like a four. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll put in a four. Fine. Cool. Can you see the turn order there? On your sheets. I can. I can. Yeah. Yeah. That that's all there now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Perfect. That's pretty awesome. Thanks. Cool. Figured it out. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Cool. So, uh, yeah, you guys all rolled real low. All right. So go ahead, Coil. You're first. Uh, go ahead and move. Why am I before the nine? Oh, I don't know why they didn't reorder. There we go. All right. Sorry. Gravarius, your <laughs> turn. Okay. And is it going to... I saw somebody where it was showing a distance. Yeah, so click on the left-hand side there. Um, there is a, um, uh, like, a little, like, circle with, like, a ruler. It might look like a cone oh, to yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to move forward. All right. Move your character... Uh, as far as you would like. Do we have a like? What do we? What do we think about this guy? I mean, I'm feeling kind of bad it would for him. Seem... <sighs> Assessing threat level. <laughs> threat level difficult to determine. I don't think he's gonna go anywhere fast with that tree through him. I concur. You said uh, at this range we wouldn't quite have so a sense you... of what the ring around the dragon is. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't. Yeah. Would we you have know, a? You all... Would I uh, have a sense that there is a ring at all? That yeah. To be curious. You would see like uh, like a weird black outline kind of going all the way around him. Okay, I want to get closer and and do some arcana e stuff. All right. Cool. I might just talk to him when I get within range. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, so it is Coil's turn. Go ahead. Um, what what's this black sooty stuff? I'm gonna investigate that. So that's the that's that ring, that red ring that you see around him. That's what I'm describing. Uh, no, but like the black stuff. Like oh, that's just stuff. grass. That's just grass. It's just like how it, the thing looks. Oh, okay. Um. All right then. So I will move. I'm gonna steer clear. So I'll move. here and then i'll dash okay i say uh these woods have been full of kobolds from what we've seen it might be wise to steer clear of the tree line Uh, do, uh, Starfire or Rolaine, do you have a preference on who goes first? You both rolled fives. You can go first. Um, sure. Um, I'm just trying to think. <sighs> How far do you, like, well, I suppose I could yell. It's only like a hundred feet. Um, okay. So I'm just going to, um, Yeah, it's kind of. I can't. Is anyone else having trouble seeing the grid on this? I can't see the grid. It is a little difficult. Oh, there it is. I, can see I see it, it now. It's, it is Sorry. very faint. It is there I mean, though. I'm gonna assume that's like not more than thirty feet. I'm gonna cast um um ch -ch 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 comprehend languages. Okay. Actually, wait. That doesn't allow me to speak a language, does it? It, it just allows not. me to understand it. Well, that's fuck. That's also 35 feet. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. There we go. Nice. Um, I then will not. I will just see what, like, I guess I'll just um, see if I can notice anything else distinct from that range. That um, you can make an Arcana check. Okay. Um. 17 all right um yeah so the circle around him uh is um it it's like seared into it and it's like a teleportation circle seared into the ground or seared into him or it, yeah seared into the ground sorry yeah it's like seared into the ground so uh it, and you think it's like it was like a one-way teleportation so it's like he just landed there and then he just landed in like with a tree in the middle of him like he just got like telefrag or, or whatever the tree teleported <laughs> or the tree teleported yeah or the tree he's jumping trees or pretty scary <laughs> that seems pretty uh terrible um okay uh, i mean I that seems strange that a a giant is teleporting too uh i will relate i don't think go ahead oh, sorry i was just gonna say i don't feel like that's something they would do there's, not normally so no. be an outside force <laughs> um yeah so i will do my best to relay the information that i've discovered to everyone else all right cool so starfire um yeah i'm gonna run up ahead here too um one two three four thirty so i'm up i'm here with relaine um and I don't know. I was going to do an Arcana check too. Um, I guess I can do it in case there's something else to gain. Yep. That seems worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you don't gain any information that he, he hasn't told you. That's fair. All right. Uh, as you're surveying the scene, uh, he goes. And he moves like a little bit. I'm going to have to move them and like. He moves a little bit and the tree comes with him. Uh, then he breaks off a branch of it and just like screaming, he just hucks it right at you, Starfire. Um, 
What is your AC? It was not rooted into uh, the ground. Ten. No, it's like toppled over. Okay. All right. So he hits you with this sort of makeshift javelin uh, for eight points of damage. Like this tree just dead or I'm passed <laughs> out. <laughs> it just just goes down. I'll, uh, I got. I'll get you. All right. Uh, so now we're at the top of the order. Uh, I'll try to shoot him with my longbow. Okay. Uh, twenty-four. Yeah, that's a hit. Okay. Six damage. Nice. Anybody able to light that tree on fire? All right, are you gonna move it all? Or you can stay where you are. Uh, I'm gonna stay where I am. All right. Cool. Um. Yep. So I run over to Starfire. And I say, um, preparing restorative nanotechnology. And my my finger lights up and I touch him and heal him for four. Cool. Uh, yeah, so you, you like get up and, and you like, there's like a little bit of a tree on top of you. <laughs> and you just like push it off. <laughs> just a little bit of a tree. So, if, so you did eight, which would have put me at negative two. Does that mean my health is now two or four? Four. Four. Thank you. All right, uh, Relaine. Okay, this guy. I'm done with him. <laughs> Let's see this little thing here. Actually, Uh, hit it with an Eldritch Blast, or attempt to. 17. Hits. Now, um, as a side question, I don't know how, uh, how, how it works in this one. Do we get, uh, advantage on a large creature in any way, like we used to? No, to they're just, their AC is usually just lower on, like, over here. Uh, 14 damage. Yeah, that's good. nice yeah so it, it hits him and he reels back and you can see just like the pain of him moving around this tree like he's not not in a happy in a good way um all right starfire um yeah so keep in mind that if you're going to move uh you have to get up from the ground which takes up half of your movement so i got 15 moves then mm -hmm. All right, and then uh, can I do an action after that, or you sure can. is getting up my action? No, you could. You're, it's just half of your movement, and you can like act, move, move, act in any order you'd like. And uh, you could even split it. Yeah, that's that's fine. I'm gonna go one, two, three, up to here, and then I'm gonna cast minor illusion. Okay. And I'm gonna make a five by five bush where I'm standing. <laughs> okay. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Um okay. So you make a bush. All right. So it's turn. All right, it's going to attack Gravarius. Uh, it's going to try and hit you. Ooh, it hits. Uh, okay. Throws another log at you for five points of damage. Okay. So just it's, just it's just breaking off these logs and just hucking them at you. It's going to move a little bit more forward. One, two, two. There we go. All right, top of the, tor top of the order, Gravarius. All right, I will... Use my 
Longbow again. 16 hits, 8 more damage. Very nice. And uh, this time I will move. How big are these smaller bushes? Would uh, that provide me any cover? Yeah. Uh, ha half cover if you just like completely hide in them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I will uh, try to get some cover here. All right. Cool. All right. Awesome. Coil. Launching flash canister. Yeah, it, it hits five damage. He he can't really dodge. <laughs> he tries to dodge out of the way, but it's just the, the tree just keeps him in place. And I I move. Cool. And that's my turn. All right, Elaine. All righty. So I am in the bushes. Mm -hmm. Eldritch Blast for 12. It hits. Nine damage. All right, yeah, he's he's getting woozy, um, but he's he he still tries to advance and huck another one at you. Um. So he is attacking you, Relaine. Um, and what's your AC with half cover? That's plus two. Sixteen. Yeah. All right. Uh, he he clips you with the tree, uh, so you're gonna take seven points of damage. Heard. All right. Awesome. Uh, Gravarius. Yeah. Uh, longbow. Okay, I got skipped. Oh, sorry. Did I skip you? Yep, I did. Go ahead. Starfire. Uh, so I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm going to blast him with color spray. Okay. Which is rolled 6d10. And uh, that determines how many hit dice they have and, and if they'll be blinded. Oh, 6d10. 21. That's how as many long hits as he has less he has than twenty-one hit dice. Twenty-one hit dice left. Yeah, or... so it's roll these. It's roll six d twenty. The total is how many hit points of creatures the spell can affect. Creatures within a fifteen foot cone originating from you are affecting in ascending order based on current hit points. Current hit points, okay. And so it would apply to him. So as long as he has, oh, how many hit points? Below so as 21. long as he has less than twenty-one hit points. He does have yeah. less than twenty-one hit points. I'm going to retroactively, I just rolled uh, as though he had disadvantage and he still would have hit you on that one, Donnie. Okay? Sure. All right. Cool. Uh, sorry, Gravarius. Go ahead. Okay. Do we keep my original roll or do I get Oh, a... yeah. You, you did <laughs> attack. Yep. Sorry. And you dealt some damage. Yeah. So this one sinks into his, into his chest and then he sort of goes down on one knee. And he's just sort of breathing hard at this point. He's not dead, but he, he can't take much more. Uh, I'll stay where I am. Okay. Coil. Launching flash canister. Coil, the, as he goes down, Coil takes the opportunity to, to launch his flash canister. And that just brings him down all the way. And he just lays down on the ground and then just starts to bleed out. Um probably finally getting release from the this tree all right um so we're gonna just take a quick break uh now uh we're just about at the hour and then we'll come back for the lootening right back okay 